Hey kids, um, today uh, I'm going to be uh, making a video uh, about an incident, uh, an event in uh, black history uh, during the t uh, 20th century. Um, so the topic of it is the Little Rock Nine. So the Little Rock Nine were a group of nine black students who enrolled at a formerly all-white central high school in Little Rock, Arkansas in September of 1957. So um, the information I'm going to be uh, reading to you and talking to you about is uh, from history.com and the full article is there. Uh, their attendance at the school was a test of the Brown versus Board of Education uh, court case, which was a Supreme Court case from 1954 ruling that uh, declared segregation in public schools unconstitutional. So what was happening up until this point in 1954 were that all public schools, or a lot of public schools, sorry, um, were segregated in the sense that white students uh, went to um, one school and uh, black students went to the other. And uh, more often than uh, not, um, these black schools were uh, falling apart. They didn't have the same tech. Uh, they didn't have the same resources and supplies, and it just was not equal. And that's where the whole uh, s separate uh, but not equal uh, phrase came from. On September fourth, nineteen fifty-seven, the first day of classes at Central High, um, Governor Orville Faubus, and that just sounds like a, a racist name, called into the Arkansas called in the Arkansas National Guard to block the black students' entry into the high school. Later that month, President Dwight D. Eisenhower sent in federal troops to escort the Little Rock Nine into the school. It drew national attention to the Civil Rights Movement. So, um, the Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka decision issued on May 9, uh, 17, 1954, uh, ruled that, again, segregation of America's public schools was unconstitutional, so it was not allowed under the Constitution. Until the court's decision, many states across the nation had mandatory segregation laws, which were called Jim Crow laws, and these required African American and white children to attend separate schools. Resistance to the ruling was so widespread that the court issued a second decision in 1959 known as Brown II, ordering the school districts to integrate with all deliberate speed. In response to the Brown decisions and pressure, pressure from the local chapter of the NAACP uh, of Little Rock, Arkansas, the school board adopted a plan for gradual integration of its schools. The first institutions to integrate would be the high schools, beginning in September of 1957. Among these was Little Rock Central uh, High School, which opened in 1927. Um, the two pro-segregation uh, pro groups formed to oppose the plan, the Capital Citizens Council and the Mother's League of Central High School. So let's pause here and discuss this in the sense that, so we're putting white people and black people together in a school. We don't think of this. We don't think this is a big idea because, a, a big deal, because it's not. People are people and they should all go to school together. But at this time, it was such a weird idea in some areas of our country that there were groups formed just to oppose this plan. So who were the Little Rock Nine? Uh, despite uh, the opposition, nine students registered to be the first African Americans to attend Central High School. Minajean uh, Brown, Elizabeth Eckford, Ernest Green, Thelma Mothershed, Melba Patillo, Go uh, Gloria Ray, Terrence Roberts, who I've ac I actually met uh, a few years ago at the uh, History Teachers Conference in Albany, uh, New York. Uh, Tom, uh, Jefferson Thomas and Carlotta, Carlotta Walls had been recruited by Daisy Gaston Bates, the president of the Arkansas NAACP, uh, as, um, and she uh, recruited these uh, students because she felt that they possessed the strength and determination to face the resistance that they would encounter. In the weeks prior to the start of the new school year, the students participated in intensive counseling sessions guiding them what to expect once classes began and how to respond to the hostile situations. Uh, Governor Orville, Orville Faubus announced on September 2nd, uh, 2nd 1957, that uh, he would call in the Arkansas National Guard to prevent the African-American students' entry to Central High. So this is the governor of Arkansas calling in the troops of the Arkansas National Guard to prevent these students from going to school, these kids from going to school. 
uh, claiming this action was for the student's own protection. In a televised address, Favis insisted that violence and bloodshed might break out if black students were allowed to enter the school. The Mother's League held a sunrise service at the school on September 3rd as a protest against integration, but that afternoon, federal judge Ronald Davies issued a ruling that desegregation would continue as planned the next day. The Little Rock Nine arrived for the first day of school at Central High on September 4th, 1957. Eight arrived together, driven by Bates. Elizabeth Eckford's family, however, did not have a telephone, and Bates could not reach her to let her know of the carpool plans. Therefore, Eckford had to arrive alone. The Arkansas National Guard, under orders of the Governor Faubus, prevented any of the Little Rock Nine from entering the doors at Center High. One of the most enduring images of this day is a photograph of Eckford, alone with a notebook in her hand, stoically approaching the school as a crowd of hostile and screaming white students and adults surround her. I highly recommend looking this photograph up. Um, I, uh, it, it, the, the thing that strikes me with it, and you'll see this when you look it up, is that um, there are women standing around her, screaming at her angrily as if she was doing something personally wrong to them. And it just... The, the racism that that, uh, that this photograph shows is, uh, is horrendous. Uh, Eckford later recalled that one woman spat on her. The image was printed and broadcast widely in the United States and abroad, bringing the Little Rock controversy to national and international attention. In the following weeks, federal judge Ronald Davies began legal proceedings against Governor Faubus. Uh, and President Dwight D. Eisenhower attempted to persuade Faubus to remove the National Guard and let the Little Rock Nine enter the school. Uh, Judge Davies ordered the guard removed on September 20th, and the Little Rock Police Department took over to maintain order. The police escorted the nine African-American students into the school on September 23rd through an angry mob of some 1,000 white protesters gathered outside. Amidst ensuing rioting, the police removed the nine uh, students. I remember uh, watching a documentary... Uh, on this event, and uh, um, people attacked other black people in the crowd. Um, uh, I I know there was a uh, young black man there who was reporting about this uh, this event, and he got hit in the head, back the head with a brick because he was black. Um, the following day, President Eisenhower sent in twelve hundred members of the U.S. Army's one hundred. First Airborne Division from Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and placed them in charge of the 10,000 National Guardsmen on duty. Escorted by the troops, the Little Rock Nine attended their first full day of classes on September 25th. Numerous legal challenges to integration continued throughout the year, and Faubus repeatedly expressed his, expressed his wish that the Little Rock Nine be removed from Central High. Although several of the black student, students had uh, positive experiences on their first day of school, according to a September 25, 1957 report in the New York Times, they experienced routine harassment and even violence throughout the rest of the year. Um, uh, I'm trying to see if I want to... Um, a lot of these individuals went on to... Uh, to lead uh, very successful lives. Um, one of them that I wanted to tell you about in particular was uh, Dr. Terrence Roberts, who I did get to meet uh, at that uh, social studies history conference in Albany. Uh, he uh, continued his educational uh, career, uh, got his doctorate, and was a professor uh, throughout his lifetime and has written uh, several books about his life and the uh, things that he uh, experienced as one of the Little Rock Nine. So I actually am going to show you a picture uh, of uh, Eckford as she's entering because uh, uh, Elizabeth Eckford, yeah, here we go. Um, because it, it just amazes me that these people were so angry that a... Um, that a young uh, person, uh, a child, was entering the school. So if you look at that picture, see the woman behind her? Look how angry she is. Well, I, I mean, the fact that she feels so strongly that a young black woman should not go to public school with white people speaks volumes about racism in this country, uh, a racism that, as we've seen from a lot of uh, – uh, events uh, recently still exist today. 
so uh, that's the Little Rock Nine, uh, a, a very important event uh, within the civil rights movement of the 20th century. Um, and uh, if uh, you need to, uh, if you think you want to look up any more information about it or do more research, please do. It's a very interesting topic uh, uh, within the civil rights movement. Uh, until tomorrow, see you guys.